Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We're now going to start the last section of component one, uh, which is learning AMC. So we are, again, continuing on with the mock. And uh, before we go any further in this video, we're just going to go through the assignment brief, go through the scenario again, understand the background um, before we start the main sections. So as a reminder, this is a mock, uh, the one that I designed for my students. And in this case, in this situation, we're working with this imaginary uh, dental, sorry, dental, medical practice in Drawsden. Um, so the title for this one is Drawsden Medical Practice Information System User Interface. Um, <clears throat> of course, make sure you put the date of issue here, the handing date before you continue. And let's get started. So this is the scenario. Developing the designs for the new user interface for Draws and Medical Practice. It's now time to follow your plan and develop the information system at Draws and Medical Practice. The user interface should allow the following items. The patients to obtain information about the medical practice, including details on the opening and closing times, information about the facilities that they may have uh, and features such as uh, be able to make and cancel appointments, repeat prescriptions as well, um, where the close, so where the closest uh, chemist or pharmacist, sorry, pharmacy, uh, can be found. Um, how far it is from the medical practice, maybe address or links to a map of some sort. Information on the current sponsored charity event and notices from the medical practice. Now I'm just going to change this here, that should say pharmacy. There we go. Now this here is directly linked to this scenario. I know I've said this in the past and I will can keep saying this because it's important that you do understand that this is just a practice in the real thing. Um, you will be given a different scenario, a different type of business and therefore the needs will be uh, altered accordingly. So it's important to, you know, to understand that just because in this case, you know, you're being asked to have a, an area in the UI to allow the, the user to create or cancel appointments. You may not need to do that for the real case or uh, coursework that you will be handed uh, eventually. So it's more about the, the, the tools that you're going to be using and how you're going to use it and, ha and, and understanding the design elements itself. Now, if you haven't already noticed or guessed, um, you're going to be using everything that you've done in learning aim A and B for this here. So it's a culmination of the two uh, learning aims prior to this that's going to help uh, you successfully complete this to a high standard. So the plans that you've created, the draft storyboards in the previous uh, section, uh, learning game, as well as uh, understanding user interfaces, all the design elements from learning game A, is going to help you uh, hopefully create something that's going to you know, get those top marks. So let's have a look at so what they want you to do for the first section here in task one, part A. So you're going to develop the user interface. You're going to follow the plan that you created in the previous um, learning aim, learning aim B, to create the user interface. The user interface should show how the user interface is appropriate for the intended device and the impact this will have on the user itself. So, you know, in this case, we can assume obviously because it's working for an organization, in this case it's a medical practice, you're going to create a new UI. So it's not going to be suitable to have it as a mobile phone device. You know, just try visualize this. You know, you're going to go into a waiting room, there's going to be 10, 15, maybe more patients waiting to be seen, waiting to make, uh, you know, uh, appointments and whatnot. It wouldn't make sense to have a a small little handset or phone or smartphone in the corner of the room where people you know enter themselves in register for their appointments it doesn't make sense it's just, it's just too small so in that kind of situation it makes more sense to have either a computer or more appropriate would be a touch screen device a tablet of some sort and you have to make it very clear that you know you've thought about this now just because in this situation a tablet is you know the appropriate device to use in this and therefore the input method is going to be more appropriate for the situation doesn't mean it's always going to be a tablet in the real thing that you do the situation could be completely switched you know on its head and they may ask you to create something that's going to be uh, more appropriate to have on a on a mobile phone, on a smartphone, and therefore the way your UI looks will be completely different. Typically speaking, you know, just the uh, the way it looks will be completely different. A tablet is similar to like the screen right in front of you. It's landscape, yeah. It's on the side. 
uh, whereas a uh, phone uh, device or an app for a phone, uh, uh, a smartphone, is more typically, you know, you'd expect it to be um, portrait going downwards. So, you know, the way your buttons are arranged, the way your logo is going to be positioned, uh, uh, you know, all of that uh, will be completely different because the, the orientation of the screen is completely different. So bear that in mind. So in this situation, we know because we've done the sketch already, uh, or you, you hopefully you, you should have done so for learning aim B. Uh, you're going to use those sketches, and hopefully you you know your teachers giving some uh, some feedback on that as well. You're going to use those to create the user interface here. So what do you need to show in the actual user interface? Well, all features, including all the overall look and feel, how the user input data should be pretty clear as well. Are they going to be typing things in? Are they going to be using the fingers to click on things? So are you basically going to see a cursor? Or is there not going to be any cursors that you just can do by hand? You know, it's all those items, um, you know, are you addressing all those items basically? How the interface responds and will output to the user? So when the user types something in. What is the gonna? What's the you know the instant response from the UI? You know you know when you click on something, is it just gonna take you somewhere, or is there something going to be shown as a result of that action made by the user? So for example, if you're if the user interface is asking someone to type in their their name, then if it's a tablet, you'd expect that a uh, a digital keyboard should come up pop up onto the onto the screen for them to allow for to you know to allow them to type in the necessary characters to type in their first name or surname or whatever it is because if it's not a computer they're not going to have a keyboard in front of them not a physical one anyway so it's those kind of things you can need to start thinking about bear in mind that I did mention in the previous uh, section learning MB that just because you have a design already set uh, in your sketches does not mean you cannot you know explore other avenues that you can't change your mind that you can't add or amend uh, your design slightly of course you are if you didn't think of something does it mean you can't add to it now your drafts your sketches your storyboards are there as a starting point Let's move on. Uh, last one here, how the user navigates around the user interface. So how do they know where they are? Can they go backwards or is it just forwards? You know, what if they make a mistake? Can they take a step back or do they have to go back to the main menu? It's that navigation itself. All the user interactions should match the user expectations and the user interface should purely focus on the overall look, feel and the user navigation method. So what we're basically saying here, boys and girls, this is the, the bonus here. Of course, eventually in the next video, I'm going to start showing you how to make the UI. The bonus here is that you're not going to be tested on the technical ability. You're not going to have to do any kind of coding at all here, uh, which is a plus because it means less uh, uh, less work for you because you're not being assessed on your technical ability. Instead, you're being you know assessed on your ability to create something uh, in, in and, and be marked and assessed on your design capabilities. Do you understand how a UI looks and should look and behaves? So we're going to be using a lot of hyperlinks to make it um, behave as such uh, as, as, as a real application would do. So you don't need to do any of the legwork behind um, the, the actual UI itself. Um, checklist of evidence, um, a comprehensive document with annotated screen prints that clearly demonstrates all features, how the user can input data and navigates, and how the user interface will respond to with outputs. Now we're going to go through that uh, uh, shortly. The next part, part B, will be once you've created your 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 UI, um, you're going to go and do a separate section where you gain feedback uh, to find out what someone else thinks because you need a fresh set of eyes. You need someone else to tell you what they think are the strengths and weaknesses. You're going to record those, you know, those comments down and then use those comments to go and make some changes, some necessary changes, justified changes to the UI itself. So you're going to have two versions of your UI. You're going to have your first draft then going to get some feedback. I'm going to show you again, you know, the, the number of ways you can get some feedback. There's the old fashioned way and there's a, you know, the, the digital way that you can get quick, you know, quick feedback from people and, uh, and get those top marks and then use the feedback because it's, it's pointless getting feedback if you're not going to use it. The whole point of feedback is you're supposed to get an insight uh, as to what other people think of the product that you've just created before you hand it to your client, which is draws a medical practice. You can't just go to the people that you're working with and say, here's my first attempt. I think it's fine. There you go. No, they want proof that you've actually had an, an, an opportunity to get some feedback, feedback from people other than you 
and what would be what would be suitable and appropriate is for you to be able to say, look, I've got feedback. Not only did I get feedback, but feedback from appropriate people, people that match the target audience that you're aiming for. So since this is a UI for doctor surgery, it makes sense to get a varied, um, a range of different responses, people from different ages, different genders, different backgrounds and disabilities and experiences, rather than just all students. Yeah, of the same age group. So what would be great is if you can get some feedback from home, parents, uncles, aunties, and so on and so forth. The more varied the feedback is, the higher your marks will be. It also makes it easy for you to go back and make changes um, that will hopefully push your grades even further. Now, if you just ask three students from your class, they all have similar kind of ideas and a mindset and, and uh, um, thinking as you do because you're in the same class doing the same thing. Uh, so it's going to actually make it harder. You know, ironically speaking, you might think, oh, but you know, some of you, some of you, uh, I'm, I'm not going to assume that some of you, you know, a, a lot of you will think like this, but I know some, some students unfortunately have this, um, this mindset of finding shortcuts. But the funny thing is sometimes finding shortcuts that actually is going to be the way where you're going to be adding more work to your, to your workload because, you're not doing it properly. So, you know, you looking for the shortcut of asking two of your, you know, your colleagues or, you know, peers or friends or students in your class, uh, you'll end up getting uh, very, very generic feedback that's not going to push you uh, the right way. Um, you're going to have to then obviously document the changes. So once you've got that, you know, quality feedback from different people, different age groups and so on and so forth, you're then going to go and make those changes and have a second version. Then, of course, we're gonna go and get that recorded into the document itself. So part C, final assessment, it's now time to assess the success of user interface and use your, uh, and the use of your chosen project planning techniques justifying the decisions made. So once you've created the first version, then you're going to get some feedback, then you're going to make those changes f using the feedback, you're gonna assess yourself. So this is like an evaluation task. So feedback was from other people other than you, this now is where, the, where, where you sit down and evaluate your success in everything that you've done so far. So one will be your final user interface, uh, what you think your strengths strength and weaknesses are, whether you've hit the user requirements or not, um, whether it's suitable for the target audience and for the purpose that you, you want it to be used for, uh, and how effective the design principles uh, meet the actual these needs. You're also gonna look at your planning techniques. This is all about learning A and B, where you looked at the PERT chart, the Gantt chart, the um, critical path analysis, your task list, list uh, storyboarding. You're gonna talk about how all of those items helped you and think about the strengths and weaknesses of each one because just because you've done a Gantt chart and everyone else in your class has done a Gantt chart and any, you know, all the students in the country who are on the same course will have done a Gantt chart doesn't mean you're all, you know, su you know successfully completes the Gantt chart. Some people will have done a Gantt chart better than others. So you have to then identify where you stand. You know, how good was your Gantt chart? And not only was it, you know, not only about how good it was, did it actually help you? Did you actually use it? And how well did you use it? And and it's not a simple, quick, you know, yes or no answer here, ladies and gents. It's so you might say that actually I started using it very very well, and then as you went through the uh, the uh, the project itself, that you found that you've had to change some of the items because you you know you assume that certain tasks will take uh, more time than actually needed, or or the opposite. You might say that actually I I am, um, you know plan to use X amount of hours or days, when in fact it actually took longer than that. I didn't, foresee, I, I, I failed to foresee this issue or this problem or this delay. And then of course you talk about improvements, the areas that could be developed to better meet the audience needs and design principles. So this section here, as always, is the grading criteria. And this is what you're aiming for. Hopefully, I'd like for most of you, especially if you're in my classes, to be aiming for the top end. Now, this is always here handed to you. So, you you know, you should really be constantly looking and referring to this table here uh, to remind yourself of the, 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 the scenario that you're in, what it is that you've been asked to do, and of course, how to get these top marks. So, as you can see at the top here, you know, for the distinction uh, for the learning aim C, Use, you have to use your plan to develop and refine an attract, effective sorry, user interface that shows all features and assess the strengths and weaknesses of the user interface, the project plan, justifying the decisions made. So if you have a, um, a plan that's been refined, 
you've created an effect to user interface, you've shown all the features, you've, show, you've then gone to assess your strengths and weaknesses uh, of the user interface and your project planning. So you're basically looking at not only but the, the, the item that you create, the product that you create in this project in learning game C, but you also go back and actually look at everything that you've done in learning game B, which is the Gantt chart, the task list, sorry, the Gantt chart, the storyboard, PERT chart, critical NAS, uh, path analysis, the mood board, all of those items, and you talked about the strengths and weaknesses of, the, of those items that you've created, and then you've justified the points and the decision that you made, then you're looking at a distinction. Um, have a read through all of these here. Of course, you should have an, uh, an access to your own copy of this. Um, and that's basically it. So in the next video, I'm going to be talking to you about the user interface. We're going to, I'm going to show you how to, so I'm not going to do an entire user interface. I'm just going to merely show you some of the um, tools that you need to create one. Um, so that brings us to the end of this video. I'll see you in the next one.